All right, our next periodic trend is electron affinity. Electron affinity in many ways is the opposite of ionization energy. Whereas ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom or ion, electron affinity is the energy associated with adding an electron to an atom to form an anion. Now, the interesting thing about the electron affinity is that it can have both a positive or negative value. So, to better understand what this means, let's consider each of these situations one by one. So, if you have a positive electron affinity, that means that energy is required in order for that atom to gain that electron. So, if you think about it, if energy is required in the process, that means the product that you form is going to be higher in energy, which means it's going to be less stable. And a good example of this is the alkali metals. We know that all atoms on the periodic table want to attain noble gas configuration. And alkali metals typically do this by losing an electron. So if you give them an electron with electron affinity, then you're actually taking alkali metals farther away from noble gas configuration. So they are now less stable and at a higher energy state. In fact, alkali metals don't want that electron. That's why we have to put in energy to force the alkali metals to take on another electron. All right. So a negative electron affinity, this means that energy is released when the atom gains that electron. A good example of atoms with a negative electron affinity are the halogens. And this should make sense because our halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, we know they're very close to noble gas configuration. If we give them just one more electron, they'll have noble gas configuration. And when they gain that electron, they're now at a more stable state, which means that they're at a lower energy. And in order to be at a lower energy state, they must have released energy in that process. So that's why they have a negative electron affinity. So now that we understand what it means to have a positive or negative electron affinity, one thing you want to be careful about is which one is a larger electron affinity, right? Is a greater electron affinity a more positive or a more negative value? And to figure that out, you can just go back to the name, right? Affinity. Affinity means you like something. So if you have a large electron affinity, that means you really like electrons. And of course, you can figure out between these two, alkali metals and halogens, clearly halogens likes electrons a lot more than alkali metals. They want one more electron to get to that noble gas configuration. So what we can say is that a greater electron affinity, a greater Ea, is a more negative value. All right. So now, let's take a look at the periodic trend for electron affinity. And again, we're going to relate this to the trend for the electrostatic force. So again, if you have a stronger electrostatic force, that means your nucleus is holding onto its valence electrons more tightly. That's a nucleus that's better at attracting its own electrons to itself. And in general, if it's good at attracting electrons, that means it's also going to have a high electron affinity. So this means that the electron affinity is directly proportional to the electrostatic force, meaning that as you go from left to right across the periodic table, the electrostatic force increases. Your nucleus is better at attracting electrons, so it has a greater electron affinity. As you do go down a column on the periodic table, the electrostatic force decreases. Your nucleus exerts a weaker electrostatic interaction on its valence electrons. So if the valence electrons are less attracted, that means your nucleus in general has a lower electron affinity. So we have a decrease in Ea due to a decrease in the electrostatic force. 